Have you ever heard of rubella? In this video, I'm going to share about what rubella is. If you are a returning visitor, then welcome back and a big thank you for your support. If you are new here, then let me welcome you to my YouTube channel and to my nursing channel. My name is Nurse Master Charlie. I am a registered nurse and on my channel I talk about and share about nursing, nursing school related topics and tips, as well as health related topics, tips and information. Today's what I like to call Germs Day Thursday, and my goal is to release a Germs Day Thursday shorts video on most Thursdays. I'm doing a series of videos about the germs related to the most common vaccinations. So these are gonna be a little bit longer than the usual 30 to 60 seconds, so I can give you a little bit more information. Disclaimer, this is not an all-inclusive informative video about rubella, just some basic information. And if you have specific questions or concerns about rubella, please talk to your healthcare provider. Okay, with all that said, so what is rubella? Have you ever even heard of rubella? Probably not, because it's not a, as common as the disease as it used to be, at least in the United States. And the reason you probably never really heard of it is due to the fact that you were more than likely vaccinated against it as a child. Maybe you never heard of the actual name rubella because it has two other names. It's also known as the German measles and the three-day measles. You may have heard of it by its vaccination abbreviation as in the MMR vaccine or the measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine. Rubella is given in combination with the measles and mumps vaccines, and these are a combination of vaccines against these particular infectious diseases. If you want to learn more about the measles and the mumps viruses, as well as other vaccines, please see my videos here on YouTube. I'll leave a link in the description. So what is rubella? Rubella, or the German measles, is a rubivirus and belongs to the Matanaviridae family. It is actually an enveloped, positive-stranded RNA virus, just in case you were wondering. Although rubella is also called the German measles, it is its own distinct and separate virus, totally unrelated to the measles. So where did rubella come from? Rubella was first described as far back as the middle of the 18th century. Rubella is from the Latin word for rubrum, meaning red, with rubella ultimately meaning small and red-like or reddish. So a quick FYI, it is referred to as the German measles due to the German physicians who first began to describe it in the mid 1700s to the mid 1800s as rochelich, which means reddish or pink in the German language. Take note, I'm talking about rubella or the German measles or the three day measles in this video, not to be confused with rubiola, which is another name for the measles, which is a totally different and unrelated virus. In 2004, rubella had been considered to be eradicated from the United States. So why even talk about it? Well, that would be because it has not been eradicated from the rest of the world. And whether people from the US travel to other countries where rubella exists, or those people from other countries come to visit the United States. That's how it keeps resurfacing to this present day. Of all the cases in the US after 2012, it was due to this worldwide travel. History of rubella. The rubella virus was first isolated in 1962 and a vaccine developed in 1969. Prior to the development of the rubella vaccine, rubella was a common disease that mainly affected young children. How is rubella transmitted and what are the complications of rubella? The rubella virus, as with many, many viruses, is transmitted through the air via droplets when a person coughs, sneezes, or even through talking, but also through direct contact of secretions from the mouth, throat, and nose, making it highly contagious. The most problematic form of transmission of rubella is in women who are pregnant who directly pass the rubella virus through the bloodstream to the unborn fetus. The rubella virus can then cause birth defects and complications and also death of the baby. Prior to 1969, and with no immunization for rubella at that time, in one year, rubella caused 2,100 newborn deaths, almost 20,000 defects or disabilities, and more than 10,000 miscarriages, and 20,000 cases of congenital rubella syndrome. So what is congenital rubella syndrome, also known as CRS? CRS occurs due to the rubella virus being transmitted from the mother to the fetus in utero, leading to miscarriages, brain and heart defects, blindness, deafness, cataract formation, learning disabilities, autism, thyroid issues, and stillbirths. It is estimated that congenital rubella syndrome, CRS, continues to affect an estimated 100,000 infants throughout the world due to unvaccinated mothers becoming infected during pregnancy. CRS was a sole motivation for the development of the rubella vaccine. Unfortunately, there's no cure for CRS, but there is a vaccination to prevent CRS, the rubella vaccine. What are signs and symptoms of rubella? Signs and symptoms of rubella include a rash, which begins on the face and then spreads throughout the body, a mild fever, swollen glands or nodes, sore throat, ear infection, fatigue, arthritis, and encephalitis. This is what rubella looks like. How long does a rubella infection last? The rubella rash usually lasts three days, hence the name, the three-day measles, and causes gland inflammation and arthritis-like pain, which may continue for a week to two weeks. Children may recover faster than adults, yet many people have little to no symptoms. Prevention. 
How do you prevent rubella? Rubella is prevented solely through vaccination. The rubella vaccine is usually in a combination vaccine with the measles and mumps vaccines that I mentioned earlier, the MMR vaccine. The MMR vaccine is administered in two doses and according to the CDC has an effectiveness of 97% in rubella prevention. You may also see the MMR vaccine combined with the varicella or chickenpox vaccine in the measles, mumps, rubella, and varicella vaccine or MMRV. The first MMR dose should be given at 12 to 18 months of age with the second dose given at 36 months. When a pregnant woman seeks prenatal care, she is usually tested for immunity to rubella early in pregnancy. Pregnant women with no immunity to rubella are not able to be vaccinated until after the baby is born as the vaccine contains the live but attenuated virus. Who should not get the rubella vaccine? As I just mentioned, pregnant women. Pregnant women should not get the MMR vaccine but can receive it after giving birth. Women who want to become pregnant should also delay pregnancy for four weeks after being vaccinated with the MMR vaccine. Now, a woman who is breastfeeding can receive the vaccine. Others who should not get the vaccine are those taking immunosuppressants and or steroids or medications that affect the immune system should not get the rubella vaccine. People who have diseases that affect the immune system such as HIV, also anyone who has ever had an allergic reaction to previous MMR vaccines. And patients with cancer who are undergoing drug or radiation therapy should not get the vaccine. For nurses, let me mention some nursing information about rubella should a person be hospitalized for rubella or if you were to be asked because you're a nurse. Nursing care is mostly supportive. Nursing care would include monitoring vital signs, ensuring adequate hydration for a patient, administering antipyretic pain medications as needed, and ensuring rest. Some education to pass along to the patients is to ensure hand washing, isolate as necessary, and not touching mucosal secretions. Some good news if someone does get rubella after recovery from the infection. Once a person has a rubella infection, immunity against future infections is acquired. It is not common to become reinfected with rubella a second time. Now, when you hear about the MMR vaccine, you now know what the R is for, what it means, and what it is, and what it does, and why people need to be vaccinated against it. So if you found value in this video and learned a little something, please be sure to give this video a like as it helps out my channel. I'm doing a series of videos about most of the vaccines that are needed for children from birth to 18 years of age, and also for those for adults, including pertussis, diphtheria, tetanus, measles, mumps, rubella, polio, pneumonia, shingles, rabies, and also smallpox. So be sure to watch those because with all this virus and vaccination talk lately, hopefully it can bring a little bit more understanding of how it all works. Also, don't forget to share this video with anybody who may benefit from this information, those wanting to learn about vaccines like the rubella vaccine, those who travel or meet people who travel from other countries, those with children, those who are in nursing school, starting nursing school, or are pre-nursing students or those who just want to learn more about topics like this. And if you're interested in health information and nursing related content like this, I'd like to invite you to subscribe and be part of my nursing channel. And also hit the notification bell so you can be made aware of when I release new videos. Also, please see my other vaccination related videos for information on diphtheria, tetanus and pertussis, as well as the measles and mumps. Because the more you know and the more you learn about these viruses and bacteria, the better. So please be sure to find me on most Thursdays for a new Germs Day Thursday video. If you're interested in the equipment I use to make my videos, I'll have some links in the description below this video just in case you need something and or maybe you want to start your own YouTube channel one day. So if you decide to buy something from Amazon, for example, it does not change the price you pay. I just get a small commission for directing you their way. So until the next video, God bless and goodbye. Thank you for watching.